Okay guys, welcome to Maverick Gumworth's channel again. This is going to be, I believe, my final follow-up with our Colt Python reconstruction as it is. With the gun that had the, the barrel full of, of bullets. Um, uh, we've had uh, a long search and finally found a, a barrel. The, actually, the owner found the barrel and a, another gun, a bunch of parts from another gun. So he has sent me a whole box of parts and he said, here, use what you have to to make it work. So that's where we're at now. I've been through everything on it, replaced a bunch of stuff, and I just want to give you a little bit of a follow-up on what we had to do to make it work again because there was more damage than we originally thought. Okay, so here we go. Kind of run down some of the issues we've had with it. <clears throat> and uh, we'll zoom in a little bit best we can to show you what I've, what I've had to do to it as far as details on fitting. A lot, <clears throat> a lot of these parts are hand fitted from the factory and uh, I've had to do some modifications on some of them to make them make it operate, make it smooth again. So anyway, you can see the original gun was the satin colored stainless and the new barrel from a different firearm is a bright nickel finish. And there's a few parts we had to take it from both guns to make it work. So one of the biggest things we found was that when I put the cylinder back in it, the spur on the back of the or gear, whatever you call it, on the back of your cylinder, the original was damaged a lot. So I've replaced this uh, spur gear and in doing so we had to turn it, tighten it down so that it lines up with the uh, what do you call it, the, the detent pins I guess they are that make sure that the uh, everything is lined up with the cylinder. When we, once we did that I could get three cartridges in and three cartridges would not go in. So I had to go back with a reamer and ream out our cylinder a little bit to uh, get these cartridges to drop in the hole. And then, okay, we've got that fixed, close it up, and we couldn't, still couldn't close it. When we closed it, we couldn't get the, uh, couldn't get it to operate from there, from a little pin back here that holds the cylinder in. That, <clears throat> got it, had it locked up, put the cover back on it, started to pull the trigger, and the trigger would not come back. The hammer would not come back. Nothing would move like it's supposed to go about halfway and that was it. And in taking it apart again, what we found was the pin right here that indexes the cylinder would not go all the way down into the cylinder far enough to allow the transfer bar to move past the back edge of it. So when your hammer cocks, you pull the trigger the hammer cocks, the transfer bar right here comes down and this pin was sticking out just enough that it would not allow the transfer bar to come down um, to make the hole so the cylinder would move. If it won't come down far enough, that means that it, it would, the action wouldn't move, the trigger wouldn't move far enough to make the hand rotate. So everything was just in a bind. <clears throat> so here again, we do it. We pull it all back apart again. Went on to the back side of my transfer bar, which is a little bit more than probably necessary, but I polished the back side of that and also the top edge of my. Uh, center pin for the cylinder to make sure that if it does contact that it slides uh, smoothly and then uh, we pulled the pin out and taking it out and looking into the cylinder before we discovered that when we screwed our our star gear spur gear onto the new onto the cylinder from the other gun that the center part was a little bit protruding so I had to go in here again, mill this out so that my indexing pin would recess far enough to go in as deep as it could so that the transfer bar would work. Okay? So what happened is the pin was going in holding the cylinder, but it wasn't going all the way down deep enough to allow the transfer bar to come by. Okay? And it's been a trial and error on my part, and actually some other folks too have helped me with this, trying to figure out how to uh, get all the commands to make them work like they're supposed to again. So anyway, we've got that part done, um, and when we uh, finished that, got it where it rotate, and then got the barrel almost in line. I found out that I was just a few thousandths off on, my, on the barrel being tight, so I ended up having to take the barrel out of it and um, put a slight, a uh, little bit of a shim in here. And not the best thing in the world, that's not the best way to do it, but that's um, what the time allowed. And, and, to make the gun function, that's what we end up doing. We've got a, 
a slight uh, shim right here to help compensate for the difference in the barrel from the old gun to the uh, to the newer parts. And now we've got it timed correctly, got our cylinder timed correctly, everything operates what it's supposed to. So, with that being said, I'm going to put the side cover back on it here in a minute, and we're going to go outside, put some ammo in this thing, go outside and uh, test fire, make sure it does what it's supposed to do. So give me a few minutes to put this back together and put my, my side plate on it, and uh, we're going to go test fire it. All right, so y'all just hang on. Rounds of 38 Special in this case. I'm not going to, oh, there goes one. I'm not going to be concerned with 357s right now. We're just going to do a function test to be sure that it does what it's supposed to do, and we'll be good to go. So there are six rounds. And I'm going to do a couple of double action and single action pulls to make sure it's uh, it's uh, lighting on both sides. All right, here we go. <laughs> I like that. Uh, man, that's a, that's a good shooting gun right there. So we've gone from serious locked up damage to operational again. There you have it. That's a very smooth pulling trigger, very sweet action. The gun is so heavy, it don't recoil very much at all. Very surprising, actually. So anyway, there's another episode of a, a restoration repair kind of deal that uh, worked out good for us this time. Thanks for watching, folks.